What are some of the steps one should take to maintain anonymity while using Bitcoin, from simple to advanced? Uh, well, Vegeta, um, anonymity or privacy is not a one bullet solution. There is no silver bullet for this. You have to layer your defenses like any aspect of information security and privacy is a fundamental components of information security. You have to use layered defenses, which means you do several things and you hope that uh, at least some of those things work. And in conjunction, they give you a degree of privacy both now and in the short and medium term future. Um, there are a number of things you can do. The first one has a lot to do with how you source your Bitcoin in the first place. So uh, in terms of least private to most private, least private is probably um, buying Bitcoin from an exchange um, because they require uh, KYC and ID and all kinds of other things that uh, not only erodes your privacy because that Bitcoin is going to be tracked and associated with that identity, but it also exposes you to identity theft because in many cases you're dealing with small startups that cannot do information security um, and it's impossible to do that perfectly. So someone can steal those identifiers. The second best is um, to buy Bitcoin from um, um, from some kind of Bitcoin ATM. Uh, but of course, Bitcoin ATMs also sometimes require ID or they require a smartphone, a cell phone number to verify you, or they're in places where there are, you know, closed circuit TV cameras all around you or other people who may see who you are. And you don't really want to go into a mall where there's a Bitcoin ATM with a low, low hat over your head and a hoodie over you and kind of look around suspiciously. <laughs> uh, then you're the cartoon villain. Um, the next uh, one would be to acquire Bitcoin in a person to person transaction um, by exchanging cash for Bitcoin in a public setting with someone who has Bitcoin. And of course, you know, that's going to have its own risks um, and potential for exposure. Um, then it would be to earn Bitcoin by providing your labor, services, products or whatever from a third party. And that's a very clean way because you can do that without um, an in person interaction. And, um, you know, theoretically, at least only the person who's paying you knows uh, who you are. If that, they might not. Um, once you've sourced your Bitcoin, of course, how you use it really um, makes a huge difference. Um, if you reuse uh, Bitcoin addresses, you violate your own privacy. So uh, a very important rule of thumb in any cryptocurrency really is um, avoid as much as possible address reuse. And of course, you know, there's only so much you can do as a user because a lot of that depends on how your wallet constructs transactions, how it constructs the change in those transactions, how it sequences outputs, what fingerprints it leaves, um, et cetera, et cetera. The third one is uh, network OPSEC. So overall operational security on your network connections. So if you're in you know, a public hotspot in a cafe using unencrypted network connectivity, uh, to a non-SSL TLS encrypted website where you're plugging in um, your name and address to have, um, you know, Bitcoin socks delivered to your home. And then you're sending that transaction from your one address. Well, I mean, you're working against yourself. And then finally, there's all kinds of other things you can do that involve um, various forms of privacy uh, improving tools. Uh, known as mixers or coin join, uh, coin swap, um, and things like that, including uh, trading cryptocurrencies of one kind for another kind in decentralized markets. Now, those may or may not be legal depending on your jurisdiction. In some jurisdictions, they're legal. In other jurisdictions, they're not. It may also depend on what you're doing with that crypto. Um, of course, if you're doing something illegal, then the process of trying to hide that is an in itself illegal in almost every jurisdiction that I can think of. Um, and I'm not going to give you legal advice. But so uh, these are really steps. And you can think of privacy uh, very similarly to the construct we've used in the past to discuss um, financial independence and sovereignty. We say, you know, um, not your keys, not your coins is one of the steps, but you can start from uh, buying some crypto that's some degree of financial independence, then um, um, 
moving that away from an exchange, that's another degree of independence. Then um, using a hardware wallet, that's another degree of independence. And we talk about that as the staircase of sovereignty, uh, a term invented by Stephanie Murphy. I really love that uh, visual of climbing up this staircase to achieve greater and greater financial sovereignty. Well, the same thing applies to privacy, right? So you can start at the bottom step and the very fact that you're not using Venmo or some other crap like that that's broadcasting your financial transactions to the entire world and every intelligence agency that's listening is already one step. I mean, even if you use Bitcoin badly, you're already doing better than Venmo um, or many of the other things. So opting out is step one. Opting out of the system of surveillance, traditional finance is step one. And then you can start climbing up the ladder. Every step is worthwhile. There is no step at which you're not a true Bitcoiner. You don't take privacy seriously. We're going to, yeah. no, applause. You managed to take one step, good for you. You're already doing something different from the majority of people out there who don't care enough about their financial privacy. And if you make it three or four steps up that staircase, you're really making a difference in the world. So keep it up. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I'm Andreas Antonopoulos. I'm the author of Mastering Bitcoin, Mastering Ethereum, and the Internet of Money series. If you'd like to support my mission of bringing education about Bitcoin and open blockchains to as many people as possible under open, free, Creative Commons licenses, please consider subscribing to my channel and supporting me on patreon.com slash A-A-N-T-O-N-O-P. Thank you.